and challenged poor health and safety practices, Kirsty among them. And unfortunately there has been a backlash from these employers about that. Kirsty has called out bad health and safety practice in the United Learning School. She wrote about a school where they were using lateral flow tests in a very irresponsible way. The school was saying, if you come into contact with COVID, then if you take a lateral flow test and it doesn't show it's positive, then you can come into school the next day. And that's just irresponsible and wrong. Everyone knows that the MHRA did not sanction lateral flow tests to be used in that way. You've got to remember the Kent variant was coming in so fast that nobody knew what was happening. The infections went in Greenwich from around 200 to over 1,200 infections per 100,000 in around two weeks. And in the United Kingdom alone, since Christmas, around 60,000 people have died. You know, it's not a small issue, it's a huge, huge issue. The government in December tried to sort of introduce lateral flow tests, which are these rapid tests, um, as a sort of replacement for isolation for contacts of people with infection in schools. And that was cancelled because of uh, the MHRA intervening. And subsequently, these were then pushed as trials. I'm very concerned about sort of the ethical approval process that has got into these trials because, uh, first of all, the protocol and this process has not been released publicly, which is quite routine for trials now. Second, um, even the, the parents who've been given information about this haven't been given information about the body that ethically approved it. The Department for Education appears to have based the use of these tests on a particular model, suggesting that they wouldn't put children at, at risk. In all circumstances and situations, even these models show that what you're doing is creating more infections in class. It's not just about keeping ourselves safe, it's about keeping everyone safe. It's about reducing the transmission so that the country can hopefully go back to working more normally. These trials haven't been suspended despite the Delta variant rapidly spreading through school. There have been about 140 outbreaks of uh, the Delta variant in schools and they're larger than outbreaks in any other setting. Even in the week, ending 11th of May, which was before masks were removed. In that week, there were 1,000 common exposures, by which I mean two or more children with the Delta variant coming into contact in the same venue. 1,000 events in one week. It's become clear through a work done by the observer that these data were suppressed. What's really worrying is Department for Education doesn't seem to have put any liability arrangements in place. So what if somebody gets long COVID? What if somebody's household member gets infected? What if they get hospitalized and die? Who is responsible? I've never in my life seen a protocol and an information sheet that does not have insurance arrangements for harm. I'm someone who lives with a rare blood cancer and for the last 20 years I've kept myself safe by isolating myself from others. Now my safety depends on everyone else doing the right thing because if they pass it on to me I've had it because I've got no immunity. So it's really important that Kirsty speaks out and is allowed to speak out. The John Rome School were forced to academise. Um, the John Rome campaign was formed Kirsty heading it. We managed to stop an academy trust first, but then the ULT, which is a larger academy trust, did take over. United Learning, sadly, is an anti-trade union oh, employer. They know that Kirsty is a very significant activist within the EU. She's spoken out for members in United Learning schools and United Learning don't like it. If the school had still been under the council control, and Kirsty would have made this comment about the council, there wouldn't be any disciplinary action. It wouldn't matter. If Kersey is sacked, Rep will feel less confident to bring important issues and difficult issues to the head teachers. Kirsty is an experienced, patient, nurturing teacher. And the John Rowe, you don't understand that they cannot afford to lose any more teachers like Kirsty because there's so many that have been pushed out in 
you know, seemingly the dead of night. Members of staff have been made redundant, some have been made to reapply for their jobs. This is all the kind of stuff that we said before it became an academy would happen. What we're beginning to see is a reduction in, in curriculum. So kids will have less choice in schools. And as the choices reduce, it also reduces those children's life chances. We had a good strike yesterday. And if the employer is foolish enough to try and dismiss it, then I'm sure we'll take more action in the future because Kirsty must be defended. The problem with lateral flow testing in this school was that they would not be sending home close contacts of positive cases and clearly that is dangerous. So Kirsty spoke out about that on her Facebook page as the Inner London Executive Member. What she said was that the use of these lateral flow tests, the way that they were being used, was unscrupulous and to be perfectly honest I think it was. Kirsty criticised an article from another head teacher as part of the United Learning Trust. This school was in Kent uh, at a time when the local infection rate was by the end of the term at Christmas 763 per 100,000 people. What the head teacher says on this article which Kirsty objected to is that parent, staff and student confidence was improved by the testing, the lateral flow testing. It allowed us to demonstrate that we had a low incidence of the virus in the school as so few students and staff tested positive. It's like magic, somehow the testing made the rate lower in the school than it was in the community. It's rubbish. What of course it shows is that the testing wasn't working. It wasn't picking up the rate in the community and in fact it was giving completely false reassurance and in fact was risking people's health and safety. That post really echoed a lot of the concerns that we've seen from regu regulatory bodies, um, the British Medical Association who have pointed out uh, that actually the lateral flow tests return a lot of false negatives and can't be relied upon as central strategy for health and safety. They're talking about vaccinating children in August when SAGE predicts that a peak of our wave is going to be July, which is going to possibly exceed our January peak in terms of hospitalization. So what about all those children that are going to get infected in the interim? Why not just bring mitigations back? Dealing with aerosol transmission is key. And we need to remember aerosols are not produced just by coughing. They're produced by talking, by breathing, by exertion, by singing. All of those things produce risk. The mitigations we've put in place are honestly probably the worst in the globe. We have almost no mitigations in place against aerosol transmission. So we need masks in primary and secondary schools. We need much more focus on ventilation. We need carbon dioxide monitoring and HEPA filtration devices. We need smaller class sizes. We need larger classrooms so that children can socially distance. We need a cap on bubbles. Many schools have bubbles of 300. A bubble of 300 is not a bubble at all. And we need to move outdoors for learning as far as we can. So, you know, PE needs to be moved outdoors, singing, etc. again, need to be moved outdoors. Most important of all, we need to keep community transmission down. And what we are seeing now is that community transmission is rapidly rising. And all of this was predictable and preventable, but the government hasn't done anything to prevent it. Thank you very much for coming this morning. I really appreciate it. I'm very confident that uh, United Learning will step back and uh, I will be back in class next week to teach my year 11s, my year 13s and my year 12s. Yeah.